you have tense in phonetics and tense in syntax but tense in syntax is a noun versus time but tense in phonetics is an adjective versus a lax which is also an adjective tense in phonetics is an adjective other than the tense the noun in syntax the noun for the phonetic term tense is tenseness tensing or tension but we're gonna stick with tenseness and then we will use laxness for the noun for lax as an adjective. Tense, the adjective in phonetics, is a term used as opposed to the adjective lax. Tenseness and laxness are used as additional features to distinguish vowels that are close to each other in the vowel chart in terms of height. Okay, once you go to the up here chart, zoom in on the vowel chart. Here in the chart, you will see that there are four degrees of height defined open open mid close mid and close and then there is three degrees of fronting which is front central back so if you look at the uh, degrees of fronting front central back you will see that for example in close front you have two vowels and then there is a line that separates them the one to the right is a rounded vowel and the same applies to the close central vowels and close back vowels and it's more common to use high instead of close, so I'm going to use high, high mid, and then low mid and low. Here you have high front vowels, high central vowels, and high back vowels. In each point you have two vowels which are distinguished by one of them being a rounded vowel. The point is there are more layers to this chart than it appears at first glance. The focus today is on the height. If you look at the chart more carefully, you would see that there is actually more height levels than the chart actually shows. So the orange lines specifically add at least three different layers that have not been mentioned in the IPA vowel chart. And the one in the middle I've called mid. Uh, the word is not in orange. It could be, but the line is in orange. And then there is near low and near high. Now we have the language to talk about all levels of vowel height in the IPA vowel chart. The significance of this is that when you're talking about high vowels, you're having three different levels of height. Let's focus our attention on the high vowels. When you're talking about the high vowels, you get high and near high. In order to avoid drawing this extra line in height and making the chart too crowded, what we can do is we can recognize all the top two tiers as high, but we can use certain adjectives to distinguish the two levels. And as you can see, there are six vowels in the high level, but there are only three vowels in the near high level. Now, here the game begins. Um, instead of using lines, we are using words. And how do we use those words? We have two sets of vowels. Both members of set one are high front. Both members of set two are their high back vowels. Now the point is, how do you distinguish between one, one, and one, two on the one hand, and two, one, and two, two on the other hand? You could say that one one is high front and one two is this is near high front the same way you could call this high back near high back or you could say this is a lax back vowel and this is a lax front vowel in other words we are using lax here instead of near high you would just say oh lax is just a synonym for near high, but that is not exactly the case. Before I continue clarifying this, let me make some notes of another nature. In phonology or phonetics, a sound or a vowel is tense when it is pronounced with a higher degree of muscular effort and breath force, which is tense. Basically, when your vowel is tense, your muscles are more tense and you're spending more energy. When a vowel is tense, it is farther from the center, has less centralization, which means that it has more fronting or backing. Now I need to give examples of this. Beat, bit, good, book. When you're saying beat as opposed to bit, your muscle is more lax your mouth is more open when you say bit 
you're spending less energy. Basically, you're dropping your jaw. It doesn't end there though. As you can see, the lax vowel is more centralized, which means it's closer to the center line. Also, when you say boot as opposed to book, your muscle is more tense when you say boot. When you say book, your muscle is more lax. It means it's more relaxed. Also, your mouth is more open, but your tongue height is closer to the central position. Therefore, lax vowels are more central than tense vowels, which means tense vowels are farther away from the central line than their lax counterparts. Now you can see that it's not just about height, it's also about centralization. If you speak a language other than English as your native language, it is very likely that your language does not contain the lax vowels. A lot of languages only have the tense vowel. This is why a lot of people who, who learn English might easily, they can easily say beat, but they can't distinguish the difference between beat and bit, which is significant and minimal pairs. If you speak one such language, the terms lax and tense help you master A and U. To begin with, just keep your mouth muscles more relaxed and less tense and open your mouth, drop your jaw a bit more when pronouncing I, like bit, and U as compared to U and E. Now, you should be able to easily say bit, pick, and lick, as opposed to beat, peak, leak. In more technical language, people might use the word fortis and lenis instead of tense and lackness, and that is because fortis, which is fortitude and strength, implies more struggle or more tenseness to pronounce a vowel. Another point about tense and lax is that they're not just features of vowels. In some languages, they can be used as features of consonants. In English, for example, Voiceless consonants patagrasa have for this articulation, which means they are tense as compared to their voiced counterparts, which are beda, vaza. In simple language, patarasa take more energy to be pronounced than bada, vaza. In phonological environments in which the voicing distinction is reduced, it is a degree of strength for this that defines the contrast between the two sets of sounds. The tenseness and laxness of vowels in English are not simply a muscular matter. The difference is partly due to the historical development of the English language, which is manifested to date in the spelling. The tense vowels occur in words ending in a silent E. Words like mate, meet, kite, and cute are more tense than words like mat, met, kit, and cut. The cooler point here is that the ones that are more lax do not have an E at the end. This is not a hard and fast rule, so it doesn't always work. And there's not always a pair for these. For example, the word good is tense, but there's no word with a lax vowel similar to this. There's no minimal pair with good and good. This table reveals a different pattern of distribution of tense versus lax vowels in American English. The closed syllables having a consonant at the end, all vowel types can occur in the closed syllables, both lax and tense. The open syllables, no consonant at the end, only contain a restricted set of vowels. And that affects whether a vowel is pronounced in a tense or lax way. As you can see in the chart, None of the vowels e, e, a, u, and a, as in bid, bed, bad, good, and bud, can appear in stressed open syllables. This is a set of vowels that may be called lax vowels as opposed to the tense vowels in the other book.